All right, so you might be wondering what Katie Bowman had to do with actually taking a photograph of this M87 black hole that everybody's been talking about. So it's important to make some context as to what this thing even is. This black hole M87, it's actually 6.5 billion times the size of our sun. So it gives you a little bit of an idea of how big this thing really is. But what makes this so crazy and why it's such a big news event is it's actually 55 million light years away. It's at the center of our universe. As a, an analogy one article used, it would be like trying to spot an orange on the moon using our naked eye. And even as soon as last year, there were scientists writing off the possibility of trying to take an image of this black hole, saying that you know it would be completely impossible unless you had a telescope the size of the Earth. And some junior researchers and this team at MIT ended up taking that problem and deciding maybe that wasn't so impossible. So what Katie Bowman ended up doing and how she played a part in this whole discovery or the whole process of actually taking a photograph of this black hole is she helped write the algorithm that would combine images from each of the different satellites around the world that were simultaneously taking a photo of this black hole. So you can think of it like, you know, a simple analogy is like if you have your phone out and you're trying to take a 180 degree panoramic image, one of those images at a given split second is not going to provide the context necessary for the entire photo. So that's what we were working with in terms of the photos from each of the different satellites. So you can see every single one of these were, were working and pointing towards the black hole and it effectively did, you know, give us the result of having the telescope with the power of or the size of the entire earth. So that's how they were able to combine the images. This is why the, the images is fairly blurry. It's because it's combined. It's not just one specific photograph uh, of an image. It's combined. And, and another way to think about it is this article uses the analogy of trying to understand how a song sounds when there's missing notes. So if you start off listening to a song and there's only one key that you can hear, obviously you're gonna have no idea what the song is. But as you introduce multiple keys, then it becomes obvious and you can infer the remaining keys to understand what that song might be. So that's exactly how they ended up coming up with the, the photo and obviously a huge event because we're never able to see something so far away. And if, if you are interested in what we're actually looking at because you know it's common knowledge that black hole is there's no light there so what we're actually looking at is the event horizon and that's what they're calling the telescope is an event horizon telescope and it's essentially just the point of no return you know the the force of gravity because it's it, black hole is, is condensed mass so the force of gravity from inside the black hole is greater than the speed of light essentially even light cannot escape it and right at the point of no return is the event horizon, and that's what you're looking at. If you're interested in more information about the black hole, I would recommend checking out the Kurtz Gazette YouTube channel. They have a couple of videos about exactly what it is and, and why it's important and you know why it's cool in general. So check those out if you have if you want more context, but hopefully that shines some light on the, the part that she played in in taking this image and why it's important. Thanks for listening.